Are you on a dark or empty path seeking answers? Watch this video exposing the dark lies, deceiving many to the truth. <laughs> We're in the Hebrew Alabate part 20, and it is Tav. Now, this is the Hebrew Alabate. This will be the last time you actually see this here, unless you download it off the uh, internet. Uh, and we see here, let's go through them real quick because we're at the end now. We have Aleph, which is the ox or the strength or the leader. Bait, which means a house or inn. The gimel, the foot, the camel or pride. Okay, Dalit means a tent, a door or a pathway. Hey means low or behold or revelation or to reveal. Okay, Vav or Wa. Actually, should be wa uh, is the nail, the peg to add, or the end, the a n d. Zayin, the plow or the weapon to cut off, to separate. The chet, the which is the tent wall, the fence or separation. Okay, and the tet, which is the basket, the snake, the uh, to surround. That the basket was the uh, letter of decision. If you uh, continued on, you got to the next letter. Yod, which is the arm or the hand or the work or the deed. The right hand, right arm power of Yahweh. Then you had Kaf, which was the palm of the hand or to open. Vomit, which is the staff. The go, to control toward or toward. Mem, which means water or chaos. Now that could be a, a steady stream of water or it could mean chaos. Noon, which is a sea, a fish, or activity, or life. Samet, uh, samet, which is hand or staff, to support or to prop. Ayin, which is the eye or to see or to experience. Then you had pay, which is the mouth, the word, or to speak. Zadi, which is the man on the side, or desire, or need. Kuf, which is the, the sun, or the horizon, or to be behind. You had Reish, which is the head, the person, the first. Then you had Shing, which was to eat, to consume, or to destroy. Okay, and then you have the last letter, which we're doing this evening, which is Ta, which means the mark, the sign, the covenant. So you see why, as I, as I point out here, the Ta, what we're getting into, the mark, or the sign, or the covenant. This is the Ta, uh, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is called Ta, the ancient way the letters draw, letter drawn agrees with the meaning of the name. Of that letter, Tal, in ancient Hebrew means a sign. The picture of a sign in the shape of a cross or in the shape of a, a sideways cross can be seen in the ancient symbols used for this character. Okay, and here is the ancient Hebrew. Uh, this is the pictograph, what they call the pictograph or the ancient Hebrew, Aleph B. And we're not going to go through these because we just went through them, but uh, you get an idea of what they looked like when they when they first started writing in the very very beginning. This is the middle script. This is what Messiah would have read and written and at his time unless he was reading from an older script or writing from an older script. This is what we call the modern Hebrew letters. It's also called the block Hebrew. It's also called the uh, Post Babylonian script because this is what they read and wrote after their Babylonian captivity. This is what they use today up until now. And you can see the difference from that as compared to the ancient Hebrew. Okay, now we've journeyed through the Hebrew alphabet and seen that every letter has a number and a picture attached to it. And each picture has a meaning which is related to your spiritual journey. From the Aleph all the way to Tav, it tells your spiritual story. 
And of course, we when we got to Ted or the basket, the, the decision, that's where you have to make the decision. That's where if you don't make the right decision, you go back to the previous letter. You go back to the letter that you were stuck at. If you can make the right decision at the Tet, you continued on and had the right hand, the right arm power of Yahweh. Okay, this is the, this here on the left is the ancient symbol. I, I originally had the ancient symbol in there, but I took it out because it's kind of duplicated. Because uh, we see the ancient symbol right there. Okay, did you know the Tav is actually an actual Hebrew word? T A V. That is an actual word. The literal meaning is the Strong's number zero uh, eight four two zero, which is the Hebrew, and it means a mark or a covenant or a sign or a seal. A mark. A covenant. You see, these words are important in Scripture. We could go over and over again about the mark or the covenant of in Scripture. A sign or a seal. When a king in the Old, uh, Old Testament, when he had to uh, put something into law, they didn't just sign it like we do nowadays. The president, Our president would take a bill and he would sign it. Well, that's not the way they did it back then. They had a, what was called a signet ring of the king. And they took that signet ring and they put it into a, like a, um, like a clay type material on the paper. And they put the signet, signet signature, they pressed the, the uh, ring down in the clay and they put the signet, the signet there. Meaning it was signed by the king. The spelling of top. Let's look at the spelling of top. Off, which is the covenant. And then you have wa, which is what? It is the nail. Wow, look at that. The spelling of top is top and wa, the covenant and the nail. If you put it all together, it, it is a sentence. It is the covenant of the nail. You see, I can't express enough the importance of this statement. Because the covenant of the nail, or we could say nails, because it was nails. It was plural. The nails of the cross. Of course, we know Messiah is no longer on that cross. That's just a symbol. Uh, we know that, but the covenant of the nail, the meaning of the nails that he took in his hands and his feet. The covenant of the nail, the top, the completeness. The book association. The 22nd book of the uh, scriptures is the book of so the Song of Solomon. And... The 44th book is the book of Acts. The 66th book is the book of Revelation. Interestingly, 39% of all the times that the word seal is used in scripture, it's used in the book of Revelation. It's used over and over again in the book of Revelation. The seven seals. The seven seals were revealed. Okay, that's just one of them. The Song of Solomon is a book of covenant. Why do we say that? Because the book of uh, the Song of Solomon talks about a love story. It talks about courtship and marriage. That's all the book of Sol Song of Solomon. Yet the book of Acts is the consummation of the marriage. Okay, and Revelation, of course, is the king. So we see how 22, 44, and 66 all go together, one after another. The courtship and marriage, the consummation of the marriage. The courtship and the marriage is our relationship with Yahweh. The consummation of the marriage is in the book of Acts, when we see the Holy Spirit, the evidence of speaking in tongues, and we're baptized in Yahweh's name. 
Then you have the book of Revelations, which is the king, which is our king. The letter Tav is used in the Hebrew words for daughter. The Hebrew word for the daughter is bat or bait. The uh, word picture tells us that daughter is the sign of the house or the covenant of the family. She is uh, she joins together two households. Isn't that interesting? She is the one who combines two households. Okay, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 30, verse 21. And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. Okay, so we see here she, they, they bore a daughter named Dinah. And we see later on in the uh, book of Genesis what happened with Dinah. Okay, uh, also means to die. It's a verb. The word uh, to die is moot. The word picture paints dying as the covenant of chaos or the sign of chaos. Genesis chapter 2 verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Okay, we see here that the, the beginning of sin, that they, if they eat of the tr that tree, they're going to die. Did they die right there, then and there? No, they lived on, but eventually they would die because sin was entered into the world once they took of the forbidden fruit. Okay, religion or law or decree. The word for religion is that. The word picture says that the law is the sign of, sign of the door or the door of the cross. Often the king's law was placed on the door or the gate for all to see. In the modern Hebrew, this is this word is this is the word for religion. Okay, uh, Esther chapter three, verse fourteen. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. Okay, the copy or the decree was given out as a law a law that okay let's read Daniel chapter 6 verse 5 then said these men we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except it, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God okay the law of his God or his Elohim okay so we see here twice the word that is used in the Hebrew it also is in the word Sabbath or rest, which is what we're getting into now, the Sabbath or the rest. Okay, the word means rest or Sabbath is Shabbat. The word picture tells us that we rest when we return to the covenant or to the cross. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Okay, the Shabbat is not just another day. Yahweh, over and over again in the Old Testament and the New Testament, Yahweh told us to keep the Shabbat. And the New Testament uh, uh, people kept the Shabbat. Messiah himself kept the Shabbat. Okay, and there's scriptures saying this. He entered into the temple on the Shabbat okay so we need to keep the Shabbat that right there by itself is a teaching all by itself let's see some other top words okay tala means to hang or to put to death by hanging taham which means perfect or complete tamam means finished or done. Tamim means perfect or whole. Now what do you see in these scriptures right here? I mean these, not scriptures, these words right here is hang or put to death. Messiah was put to hang, put to death. He was perfect and it was complete. It was finished, done. He even said it is finished. 
He said on the cross, it was finished. It was completed. His job on earth was completed. Okay, and tamim, perfect or whole. Because once we're baptized in Yahweh's name and filled with the Holy Spirit, and we, we, we take on the Spirit of Yahweh, and we take on living for Yahweh, then we're made perfect. We're made whole. Some more top words. Tik tikla, which means completion. Torah, which means law or instruction. And Tehila, which means praise. Okay, you see, oh, in the book of Psalms, you see that word a lot, praise. Because that's a book of praise. And that word praise is Tala. The, I'm sorry, Tehila. How, now, what are some ways you, to ratify a covenant? How do you ratify a covenant? How did they ratify a covenant back then? They gave their hands. A handshake, a handshake to, to say an agreement. What's another way? The taking off of a shoe. You see this in, in scriptures in the Old Testament where they took off a shoe and they gave it to the other person. Okay, that was a sign of a covenant or ratifying of a covenant between two people. Okay, writing it down and sealing it. Like the law was done at, by the kings. They wrote the law down. They had men write it down. Then it was sealed with the covenant of the king's reign. Okay? Erecting monuments. And this happened a lot in the Old Testament with the kings. Okay? They, they erected monuments to the themselves. A lot of the bad kings did that. A signing of a name. Now, how, we do that today. We sign our name. We, we have a contract to buy a house or a car or something. We have to sign our names. I'd like to get a dollar for every time in my life since I was born that I ever had to sign my name. It happens all the time. You can't practically do anything. You go to a, to a restaurant and you give them their credit card. Your credit card. You have to sign the receipt. You sign your name. You're saying... What you're saying is that I agree with the amount that's on this check. Okay? Gifts. The giving of gifts. Like the three kings. The kings. They came to Messiah when he was born and they gave gifts. This is a way to ratify a covenant. Feasts. They, they get, had feasts. All kinds of feasts. Salt. Okay, they with salt. They used salt as a ratifying of a covenant. They also did sacrifices as a way of, to ratify a covenant. And finally, an oath. You ever hear somebody say, "My my word is gold," or "His word is gold"? What they're saying is, if he said something, if that person said something. It was their oath. It's, they're going to stand by it. Now, a lot of these things we don't do nowadays to ratify a covenant. Normally, all we do is we sign a name. That's all we normally would do. We would sometimes shake a hand on something if it's not something that is uh, really important. Like if you agree to something with a friend, you would shake a hand. But all these other things we don't normally do nowadays. To covenant with someone is to align with someone. You see, you see, you see the importance of this right here. To covenant with someone is to align with someone. We have a covenant between us and Yahweh. What's, what are we saying? We're aligning with Yahweh Messiah. We're aligned with Yahweh. That's our covenant between us and Him. When we accept Yahweh. The foundation of all things is alignment. You see the picture, three pictures here. Uh, from left to right with 
less and less skin on the body, or skin and then muscle in the middle, and then the skeletal part in the body on the right there. This is a normal stance, standing straight up. This is the way you should be standing if you're standing straight up for any length of time because it's good on the back. Okay, this is alignment, straight up and down. This is what it's talking about. Now look at that, straight up and down. Us and Yahweh, straight up and down between us and Yahweh. It's the same thing, it's the same principle that right here, this would be us straight up with Yahweh. We have to be in alignment with Yahweh. And how do we get in alignment with Yahweh? We get in alignment with Yahweh when we're obedient to His Word. What's the significance of Tav? It's the mark and the seal of the covenant. It's the seal, it's the, the final seal of the covenant. You see, back then, and their scripture, uh, References for this is when the king made a law and he signed it with the, the king's ring It was a sign or a mark of a covenant that could not be changed We saw that in uh, the book. I believe it was Esther Where they could not change the law They were going to kill the, the children of the Jewish people and they could not change the law once it was made Okay, so this is an example of this right here. The significance, it's a mark or a seal. That's why Yahweh always wants to, us to be filled with His Spirit. He wants us to be in His Word all the time. He wants us to be aligned with Him all the time. Because that is our seal, our covenant. Our, our covenant with Yahweh is the, our obedience to Yahweh. Okay, the mark. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. And Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that are done in the midst thereof. Okay, we see here, right in the book of Ezekiel, it talks about going through the midst of the city and set a mark upon their foreheads of the men to sigh and to cry for all the abomination to be done in the midst thereof. What is this? A mark? The, set a mark, a covenant, a mark upon that person. Now, where else do we see the, the word mark in Scripture? And I'm not talking the, the gospel of Mark. Okay, the mark, word mark here. Let's, let's uh, do this real quick here. Okay, the mark is the Hebrew number 8420. Tav. From the Hebrew 8427, which means a mark. By implication, a signature. Kind of what we do nowadays. Okay, and we'll go to 80, Hebrew 8427. And that is Tava means to mark out, primitively to scratch, or definitely to imprint. When you sign your name, you imprint with ink, or well, normally with ink, if you're signing something important, you're imprinting your name on that piece of paper. It's the same thing, tava. So next time you go to sign something, that how this come to mind? Tava. You're tava, and you're coveting it, you're, you're marking, you're marking out. And this is a primitive root. Okay? Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. We're going to see that another again where it says about the mark. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Mashiach, and for the word of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Mashiach a thousand years. Okay, now this is a prophetic event. This has not happened yet. Um, it will come to this right here. 
Because Yahweh's word does not change. Yahweh's not going to change his word in the end. And it says here that uh, they were not, they wouldn't worship the beast, nor his image, nor receive a mark upon their forehead or in their hand. Now you might say, well, what is that mark? It's going to be a distinguishing mark that the anti-Messiah is going to re uh, require for all people. It will be on the, the uh, hand, the back of the hand, or on the forehead. This will de de uh, define you as a follower of the anti-Messiah. Look at this, how it talks about how they lived and reigned with Messiah a thousand years. Okay, why? Because they would not get the mark or the covenant on her hand or their foreheads. That mark or that uh, that mark there is a covenant between you and the an uh, the person in the anti Messiah. Revelation chapter seven verse four. And I heard the number of them which was sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, this is the opposite of that. In that these, the number of them were sit that were sealed. How were they sealed? Sealed with the the Holy Spirit of Yahweh. That the hundred and forty four thousand would be a witness in that end time to get out the gospel of Yahweh Messiah. Hundred and forty four thousand, not sealed with the mark on the hand or the forehead. They're sealed by Yahweh. And they're protected by Yahweh. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 6. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is in work. And begin at my sanctuary. And they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Okay. Come not near, near any man whom is the mark. You know, another way that they did the mark in the New Testament was when a, a leprous person, when someone was leprous, they had to cry out, unclean, unclean. And it was a mark, a verbal mark or covenant that they were unclean and you could not come near them or you yourself would become unclean. And you would be treated just like that person that has leprosy. So that was a verbal mark that they used in the New Testament. But here it said not that for any man not to come upon the person whom has the mark. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17. Let's look at something in the New Testament. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. And if it first begin at us. What shall the end of them be that obey not the gospel of Yahweh Mashiach? Okay, now, the judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. The judgment has to start with the people of Yahweh. And this scripture is very clear that what will be the end of them to obey not the gospel of Yahweh Mashiach. Okay, these people will utterly uh, if they don't get themselves right with Yahweh, they're going to receive gladly the mark of the beast. There will be people out there that receive without knowing the mark of the beast. That's why we have to be alert and aware in these end times. And we have to keep an eye on the, uh, the, the news. Okay, because the news is going to keep us informed about where we're at on the timeline. They're not going to say, well, in six months we're going to do the mark of the beast. They're not going to say it like that. But they're not going to be that precise. But we'll know the signs. The scriptures even say, we'll know the signs of the end time. And this is, this is that. We have to be obedient to the, the, the gospel of Yahweh. Ezekiel. Going back to Ezekiel. Chapter 11 verse 12. And ye shall know that I am Yahweh. For ye have not walked in my statutes. Neither executed my judgments. 
but hath done after the matters of the heathen that are round about you. Okay, you, you're going to know those that obey not the gospel of Yahweh. Because they're not going to, they're going to follow the way of the heathen. They're going to, some of them will act like everything's uh, good and dandy around the world. And then the scriptures say, uh, peace, peace, then sudden destruction. You see, we have to be careful that we're right with Yahweh, that we, we obey his statues, so that we're not, we don't follow the way of the heathen. And that heathen, the walking away of the heathen, will lead into getting the mark of the beast. Now do you remember when I said the 22nd book was Souls of Solomon? The 44th book was the book of Acts. And the 66th book was the book of Revelation. Let's look at some other interesting 22's in the scriptures. You might not think, wow, there are probably not very many, but believe it or not, there is. Okay, Genesis 22, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did, take, did tempt Abram, Abraham, I'm sorry, and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I would tell thee of. Okay, now, we see here, Genesis 22. Interesting, that's the binding of Isaac. But Yahweh wanted to uh, test Abraham, tempt him. Test him, not tempt him like tempt him to sin, but tempt him to test him to see if he was going to be obedient to Yahweh. He told him to give his only son. Why, why is that important in Scripture? Because always in Scripture, they wanted a male child to carry on the family name. To carry on whatever, you know, uh, whatever the family had. To constantly be carrying on the family name. And we still do that today. We, we want a child. I know I, I myself wanted a son. To carry on our family name. And that's what we did. We uh, we had a son and he's carrying on the family name. And that's the same thing here. That's the importance of this. You see Abraham knew this was his only son. And if, if he killed him. The family line would not continue. But if you read these scriptures here. If you read this whole story. He took him up to the, the, the Mount, uh, Mount Moriah, he binded him, and he raised his knife to slay his son. Because he knew that if he killed his son, Yahweh would still continue the line. Yahweh would uh, re heal that child, his son, so that the, the family line would be able to would continue. But Abraham here had the faith that when he was going to find, he still was willing to kill his son. The Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6, the 22nd book. Set me as a seal upon thy heart, as a seal upon thy arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath the most venant flame. Okay. Now, the set me as a seal upon thy heart, a covenant, a mark upon thy heart, a seal upon thine arm. Love is stronger than death, and jealousy is cruel as the grave. You see, y'all, we saying here to mark him as a seal, a, a mark upon his heart. That's what Yahweh wants us to do. And that's what we do when we fall before Yahweh. Is we we ask Yahweh to mark his covenant on our hearts. The final seal. We have Aleph. We have Mem. And we have Tav. This word is 
truth or emeth. Yahweh has been tested and found to be the mark of the covenant or the truth. He's become, he is the mark of the covenant. He is the truth. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we see that he is the final seal, the Aleph, the Men, the Tav, the truth. You also have the beginning letter of the Aleph, 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 and the ending letter of the Aleph, Tav. You also have the Men, which is in the middle of the alphabet. You have the beginning and the end, and you have also the middle. You see, Yahweh doesn't cover just the beginning and the end. You ever read a book or watch a movie? And you start to watch maybe half an hour of that. Then you skip to the end to see what happens. You, you forget all about the middle. Well, Yahweh didn't do that. You see, in, in time, Yahweh didn't start with the cross. The covenant. And then skip all the way to the end, the top. When he comes back to get his people. You see, he was the beginning and the end. And he was all in the middle of that. Because he had to save people. He wanted people to be saved. Elif and Tav is the word et. Okay, we can see here on the top in the, in the post-Babylonian script or the modern script. And we see it on the bottom. In the uh, pictograph script. The leader of the house of the covenant the leader the Aleph of the covenant see Yahweh is that leader of the covenant he is that covenant in the beginning Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth I'm sorry okay I'm glad you knew that because it wasn't up on the scripture on the screen okay we see here in the Hebrew, we see here on the screen in the Hebrew, in the red, there is the letter, the word, et, aleph, and tav. Et is one of the few words in the Hebrew that is untranslatable. This is an untranslatable word. The et, Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end saith Yahweh, which is, and was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay, he is the beginning and the end, the Aleph and the Alpha and Omega. Now, this here is the Greek. This is written in the Greek, the, Al the Alpha and the Omega. They're both Greek words. What did it say in the original Hebrew? It would have said something like this. I am the Aleph and the top, the beginning and the end, saith Yahweh, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. You see, it would have used the words Aleph and Tav, the beginning and the end, which is exactly what Yahweh is. He is the completeness. He is the completeness. He's the beginning and the end. Interestingly, word, interestingly the word et is found 8,333 times in the Hebrew Scriptures. Also, the word Ed is before Esau's name. Every single time, he's, time before he gave up his birthright. What does it say? The birthright was with Esau. And it was transferred to Jacob, his brother. Because he despised his birthright. Do we despise our birthright. You might say, well, no, I, you know, I'm still a son of my father. No, I'm not talking physically. I'm talking spiritually. You know, as, even as believers, we can deny our, we can deny our birthright. We can say, walk away from Yahweh. And there's religions out there that teach that, you know, you can't lose your salvation. Well, you can walk out on your salvation also. 
You see, right here, Esau sold his birthright. Ezekiel 9, Yahweh marked his people with the sign of a cross. You can read Ezekiel chapter 9 at a later time for if you want to uh, be informed about that. Okay? The cross calls us to give our lives and to receive it back. We give our lives to Yahweh and we receive it back. Because Yahweh doesn't just receive, receive, receive. Yahweh gives back to us also. And how many out there can say, Yahweh is Dave back to me. I know I can say that. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 through 26. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what is it for what is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Okay, let's look at this. If any man desires to come after me, let him, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow after me. He said, you see, Messiah, when he was calling the disciples, he told them, come and I will make you fishers of men. He wanted them to not to deny themselves, to to walk away from their their business or their what they they did for a living, and to follow him. And that's what he does with us. He wants us to take up our cross and follow after him. Now that following after him is not always easy. I'm not going to say it is, but the scriptures say we have to do that. The scriptures say, to, it continues on, and if we gain our life, we're going to lose it. But if we lose our life for Yahweh's sake, then we're going to gain it back. We're going to gain it. You see, if we gain our whole life, if we gain our life in this world, we're going to lose it in the end. But if we lose our life in this, this, this life, we're going to gain it back in the end. Now what's that saying? It's saying that if we lose our life in this world, if we give up our worldly desires and our worldly pleasures to follow Yahweh, to take up our cross and follow after Yahweh, we're going to lose our life in this, this life. We're going to lose all that, that worldly pleasure. But we're going to gain a heavenly pleasure in the future. And we look forward to that. What will a man gain for gain? What for a, if a man gains the whole world and loses his own soul? It's asking a question here that we all need to ask ourselves. What will a man gain if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? What did Esau gain, gain give for his birthright? He gave his birthright for what? I'm going to finish this. I'm going to close this out this evening. And we see that Aleph and Tav. We see the Tav, the importance of the Tav, the covenant, our covenant with Yahweh. You know, this covenant is very important. Have you today, do you today have that covenant with Yahweh? Do you today give up your whole life, lose your whole life to gain it for Yahweh? The benefits that if we gain the whole world, lose our soul, gain, gain, uh, lose our soul in this life. The, plant, the gains in the future are, are enormous. We want to thank you very much for coming this evening and wa watching these, this uh, final teaching on the Hebrew Alphabet.
for watching this video. We hope you were edified by this content. Reach out to us with the information provided on screen, or you may click on the links to view more of our videos. Please subscribe to be notified of new uploads. Until next time, Shalom.